All right, guys, we're back with round three, Edison format, Epic Cards and Games with Hearst, Texas. We got Gabriel on the left playing uh, Black Wings versus Aaron on the right playing Psychic. So I know most of these Psychic cards, but there's some that I'm not too familiar with, but we'll see what, how it goes. Both these guys are X1, so winner is still has a good chance to make top four, while loser could maybe still sneak in depending on tiebreakers. So looks like Aaron summons Mind Protector, and that card is a level three monster. And like monsters with 2,000 less attack can't attack. I think that's what it does. Yes. Except psychic type monsters. So zero attack, 2,200 defense. And he pays life points during his standby phases. So here, Aaron bottomless is the Shura. And now Gabriel sets two. He activates Trap Dust Shoot. And Aaron's hand is Psychic Commander, Mind Protector, one for one. And, uh, well, the, the Telekinetic Power Will. So I think Aaron has to pay 500 here. Yes, he has to pay 500 for the Mind Protector. So he chooses probably the Commander, but the... I don't think it really matters what you send back. So he chooses... I mean, this is tough. Yeah, the, so the Psychic Commander, he can't make a level... Depending on what that other back row is. So he's left with 1 for 1 and Telekinetic Power Well. Yeah, so he pays 500. So will he 1 for 1 into... Uh, Oh, he has the MST too. I was wondering, like, if if uh, if Gabriel has an oppression, he was he had been in a good spot, but he had the MST. So Gabriel's hand is double Blizzard and Kalute. Yeah. So now he's gonna now he's gonna go off, but he is gonna have to pay life points. At least he doesn't have the field spell. So let's see what Aaron does. Aaron pays eight hundred tributes to the Mind Protector. Gets. That one pays another 800. So he's trying to fuel the graveyard for uh, telekinetic power. Well, can he can he OTK him? Is this enough for the OTK? I don't know this deck well enough to know all the plays. So here he pays another 800 for the Mind Master. Tributes Krebons. Gets Destructotron. That one pops uh, set spell and traps. So he synchros for probably Magical Andro because he's going to gain a bunch of those life points back. Yep. And now here comes Well. Uses his last card. He's going to bring out, what, four monsters? One, two, three, four. I forgot Well. What do you, how much do you pay? 200 for each monster? Where is it? Telekinetic Power Well. Here it is. Special summon any number of level 2 or lower psychic type monsters from your graveyard, then take damage equal to the total level of those monsters by 300. That's a lot. Wait, what happened in the end, right? Oh, he summons this card. So I know he took 600 there. And another 6 from the Krebons. And what else did he bring back? Is it level 2 or lower? Who was the other one he brought out? I don't, I don't know. He's at 39, but... <clears throat> so he tributes Dr. Cranium, so he takes another 800. Brings out the snail. Oh, he's going to make that card attack twice. Okay. Is that game? Oh, I guess that's game. I must have missed something somewhere. I know that thing, this monster, this Hyper Psychic Blaster is 3,000, and it can attack twice thanks to the snail's effect, but where did the other 2,000 come from? Maybe he had a monster that made him gain attack. I don't know, but Aaron wins game one, and here we go, game two. Gabriel opens the Shura Whirlwind combo, the Blue Whirlwind combo. Looks like he's going to search Bora, probably trying to abuse Whirlwind. See, that's... Depending on the rest of your hand, I feel like sometimes this is risky, especially game two and three when all the dust tornadoes come in. <clears throat> especially a lot of body players I've seen, they side, they main deck one dust and side the second and third one. So, yeah, the game two and three, that world one's not going to resolve as often. It looks like Aaron set two, sorry, set one and passing. Here comes Bora, Trigger World One, Torrential. Okay. So he's got Blizzard, Gale, Mirror Fort. Sorry, Blizzard, Gale looks like 
Heavy. No, no heavy. He does not have it. He has trap stun, though. Okay, let's see what Aaron can do. Hopefully, he sighted in some dust runners. So, he summons this thing. So, it's a 1500 monster. You banish a psychic type monster and you gain 500. So, here it gets bottom list. Yeah, I feel like this deck plays a lot of like monsters you don't want to draw. This is like my fourth time watching this deck. Third or fourth time. Unfortunately, I've never played against Aaron using this deck, so <clears throat> if I played against him, it would help me kind of know the, the deck a little bit better. So here, here he goes. Chain Link 1, uh, what is it? Chain Link 1 Blizzard, Chain Link 2 Whirlwind. So he's searching for the Vayu. And now Blizzard will bring back Shura so he can make a 6, or he could just attack. Maybe if he has Icarus, he'll just attack him. <clears throat> Attacks him for 13, so we're at 8,000 to 67. Sets another back row. All right. Looks like Aaron's got brain control. I'd be afraid of Icarus here. He didn't set the trap, so maybe he had two of them. So Aaron passes, and here comes a lure from Gabriel. Draws two more trap cards so he can banish the Vayu he drew with the... Sorry, the Vayu he searched off Whirlwind. All right, Gable's thinking about... So, Kalut, Gale, Vayu, D-Prison, and then I think... What's the other trap card? He chose the Kalut instead of the Vayu. That's interesting. I wonder why he chose the Kalut. So, here, Gable summons Vayu, attack for... Maybe he's got something to stop a mirror force. Torrential's gone already, so you can be a little more aggressive. I wonder how the format would be if Torrential was a two. Because I, I remember when Torrential first went to two in, like, Dino Rabbit format. Oh, he does have the mirror force. Oof. Oh, no. Sets one and passes. Here comes terraforming, so he's gonna get the brain research lab. And that card, anytime, yeah, I think anytime you, it gives you an extra normal summon for a psychic type monster, and anytime you pay life points to use a psychic type monster's effect. Oh, you play I didn't know this. So if you if your extra normal summon is successful, you play psychic type counter on that card. I didn't know that, so that's why Aaron was doing it the previous duel. Okay. So yes, you can also place one psychic counter on this card instead of paying life points to activate any psychic type monsters effect that you control. Only problem with that card is if you get if it gets destroyed, you burn you get burned for each a thousand for each counter on it. So he summons Destructotron. Yeah, I gotta read this card too. Let me go read it. Um... Okay, so he, he can pay a thousand life points. So he can activate the field spell. Why didn't he activate the field spell? I guess he doesn't want to take the thousand. No, he still takes the thousand. He doesn't want the field spell to gain the counter. So here, Gabe summons Gale, attacks him for 13. So I think uh, Aaron's other back row is trap stun. So maybe he can pull off a Black Rose play if he has like a level 4 monster. Because I think he has brain control in his hand. Yep, here comes trap stun. Oh, he chain traps into the trap dust shoot. Okay. Can he make a Black Rose? I think he has brain control. Yep, so now he's at... Maybe this is why Aaron didn't play the field spell because he was planning a Black Rose him. Oh, never mind. Never mind. He's going for a six. So which chooses Goyo. Attacks with Goyo for 28. 52, 36. But I think Gabe's got another Blizzard in hand. So he's got a... No, never mind. Never mind. I thought he had a Blizzard. No, he only had one. He used it earlier. I think that was game one when I saw the double blizzard. Gabe sets D prison and pass, so we're at 52 to 36. 
Aaron's up a bunch of cards, so he should be able to win this game. But yeah, he has the one. He has a deep prison for the Goyo, and then he summons Mind Protector. So obviously, monsters with two thousand less attack can't attack except psychic monsters. And then during Aaron's standby phase, I have to pay five hundred to keep Mind Protector on the field. So it switches it to defense. Let's see, are you afraid of Icarus? Do you just leave the Mind Protector on the field? <sighs> Looks like Aaron's playing around Icarus and leaves only the Mind Protector. And here comes the second Whirlwind. Normal summons Bora, Search, Blizzard. And you still can't attack, so next turn... Next turn you'll be able to deal with the Mind Protector by summoning Blizzard, making a... what? A six? So yeah, he had to pay 500. So he's at 26. Yeah, the next turn should be game. He has no defense. I mean, he could set the telekinetic power well, but Gabe just needs to make armed wing and with the blizzard, and it should be... Ooh, he summons Dinah, but you still can't attack. Ooh. I don't know, man. I think I would have summoned blizzard. Oh, you could have halved the guy, too? Now here comes Trunade. Everyone's side decking Dinah. It, it annoys me when people side Dinah against Vayu and it hurts me at times. I don't think it's that good against Vayu, but it it can't it can pay off. Okay, this card I don't know. What is this one? Let's see if I can find it. I don't even know this card's name. Okay, it's Power Injector. You can pay 500 life... No, 600 life points. Have all face-up Psychic-type monsters gain 500 attack this turn. So it's a 1,900 beater, but you have to pay life points. So he attacks over Bora, uh, Bora for 200. I guess he did that in case G uh, Gabe had Kalut. He doesn't want to attack into Ashura. That's three after the Trune. Yeah, it's not looking good for. I don't know. I think I, I think Gabe messed up by summoning Dinah. He should have gone for the the Blizzard play last turn. Yeah, my protection has monster with two thousand less attack, so he could have like just made a level six attack, and then it should have been game. Here he sets a monster and passes. Summons Blizzard. Does he have Icarus now? Yes, he gave. Now that the Dinah's up, you can't deal with that. You can't attack. I guess you're just waiting for him to burn himself. Does he have 15 or 1,000? Did I miss one burn? Okay, so he tributes that card. Sets one. I have no idea what's going on here. Did could he not pay anymore? Did I miss? A, I must have missed a few burns. So that's why he had to destroy the card. So he must be at five hundred. So if that's the case, he can't even pay for Krebons. Because what does his brain research lab say? Can you can you keep paying for Krebons while this thing is up on the field? So he tributes Blizzard for Sirocco. So you can't still you can't even attack with. Oh no, yes, he he can't attack. So I'll double Kalut, and that is game. So Gabe forces the third game. That was a weird scenario at the end. I don't know exactly what happened, but I think I missed a few of the burns. That's why I prefer the players take track of their life ones, and they are, but they're not using like a visual, a visual calculator. All right, game three. Who's going to move on with a chance to still make top four? Aaron summons Krebon, the sets two. Gabe with the heavy. Oh, heavy's dust and bottomless. Activates a lure. 
See, I've been put in that scenario a bunch. Like whether you set bottomless and dust against Black Wings turn one. What would I do if I opened both those cards? Would I have set both? Probably not. Maybe, I think there, you only set the bottomless. Because, let's say he does open Whirlwind, right? Unless he summons Kalut, your bottomless will be live. And then you can set Dust Tornado and then Dust uh, the Whirlwind. Unless if he has an end phase Icarus play. That's just my opinion. I think that, that would have been better. I don't, I don't like setting two. Sometimes it's setting two is the correct play, though. Depending on your hand. All right, so now Gabe sets a monster and passes. So Gabe sets the third back row, which is D Prison. Activates Icarus, tributes. Oh, Starlight Road. This will, this can be a blowout, blowout at times. Because think about it. He lost his Shura and his Icarus, and now he's... Aaron's got a free Stardust that's going to negate another card. We know Gabe's got the D-Prison back there. And what monster would he said that he would tri rather tribute to Shura? Dinah? Vi I mean, the only monsters he sets is Dinah and Vayu, so... We saw Dinah game two. So he's got Brain... And I'm, I'm on, he's got three spells in hand. One of them is brain control. My oh, he's got brain mind control and brain research lab. Is, is he going to use the mind control? So he activates brain research lab. And passes. Oh, so he said another Shura. Okay, that's why he's willing to tribute the other one off for Icarus. Maybe trying to bluff him. So Shura attacks, Stardust, activates Kalut. So Aaron will take 700, and then he's going to trigger Shura's effect. What's he going to get out of? Veyu, a Gagale. He's going to choose to bring out a Kalut. Yeah, Gabe's thoroughly shuffling his deck, so I guess, does the Brain Research Lab, I guess you put a counter on it when you negate with Krebons, or he's paying for it. I guess you can use the Psychic Counter, but Aaron chose to pay the lot. I, I don't know exactly how these cards work. If I'm missing something, let me know in the comments, guys, because I don't know these Psychic cards that well. Like I know Krebons, I know Mind Master, but I don't I don't know this brain research lab. So he attacks with Kalut. It looks like Aaron's gonna take 800. Now game with three back rows. End phase dust the new one, which is Royal Oppression. Ooh. Now he's got brain no, he's got mind control. I don't think Gabe has another Icarus. So we know, we the audience know one of his back rows is D-Prison and I wonder what the other one is. And you just sniped the dust tornado, the oppression with Dust Tornado. I think he's got mind and brain. Some as mind protector. And passes, all right. Four versus six. Switch is sure it's an attack mode. Even though he can't attack with either one of them. Yeah, he can't attack with either one of them thanks to Mind Protector. So now, uh, here he's going to pay five, but he, is he going to use the field spell? Okay. So this time he chose to use the field spell and not take the 500.
So he activates mind control. Yeah, I don't think he has an Icarus. Targets Kalut. So here he can make a level 8 or a 5. I think I make a 5 if I'm Aaron. And hope he doesn't have a Kalut. He already used one. Two Kalutes are gone. So, yes. Oh, no. All three of them are gone, right? Yeah, all three Kalutes are gone. But there's, like, so many trap cards he could have. He could have... He doesn't have Icarus. So he summons Android in defense. And he's going to gain 12. So here he bottoms his Android, so he's not going to gain 12. And extra normal for this guy that... This one gains 500 attack by banishing a psychic type monster, but do you pay life points for this effect? Where is it? Where is this one? Mm. No, you, well, you can pay twice per turn. Oh, I didn't know it was twice per turn. I thought it was once per turn. So that's his normal summon. So he's beefing up these guys. Yeah, Gabe has to read all these cards. I don't blame you. I have to read them too. So this one, once per turn, you pay 600 life points to have all... Oh, this power injector boosts all psychic type monsters by 500 by uh, paying life points. So he's going to beef up both his monsters. They'll both be over 2,000 to play around the mind protector... And here, Gabe is forced to deep prince one of them, but this one can attack over the Shura. How many psychics did he banish? One? Okay, so it was at 2,000 plus... So it was 2,000, and how much does he gain for itself? So it's at 25, so Gabe took 700. So this should be accurate, 73.49. So Gabe's got three cards. Man, this Mind Protector hurts Black Wings a little bit. They can't attack with any other monsters. All right, now Gabe draws a four. I think he said a spell. He's got, like, Brain Control, I think. Now Aaron pays five, so we're at 39 to 73. Summons the snail, so the snail can make the other guy attack twice, but it can't attack the turn to uses the effect. Okay, so did he do this effect once? I think he did it once. So I, I'm guessing he took 4,000, or did he do it again? I think he might have done it another time. So it should be 3,039. So remember, non psychic type monsters with 2,000 less attack can't attack. So he's using the snail again. What's the snail's effect? Where's the snail? You can pay 800 life points. You pay enough to select one of the face of psychic type monster you control. That monster can attack twice during each battle phase. And then he brios. And that is game. Oh, he said Dinah and Trunaid. So congrats to Aaron moving on to round four with Psychics. So Aaron has to win the last round to get into the top eight. But he could still lose and potentially sneak in. Whereas Gabe is not his is gonna come down to his tiebreakers. He has to win the last round and then hope for tiebreakers to make top eight. But hope you guys enjoyed that match. It was a little tough commentating because I don't know these cards and Aaron's constantly paying life points, so. I apologize for that, uh, but I still hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'll see you guys next time for the rest of the rounds.